All right, I want to go over the uh, product stuff so you can see how to start your um, product. That way, as your um, environment's rendering, you have um, obviously something to work on. Remember, as it is rendering, you can just make a new cinema file, start working on stuff, and then continue as it's going. Um, if you do need to render your stuff, it takes longer than class. Those render signs over here on the board, you just put that render sign on your desk. Typically, the person coming in next hour won't screw with your stuff. Um, typically, I check too if I have time and make sure your stuff is good. Um, as a, for instance, Lily rendered her stuff the other day. It was going, I checked it, but none of the stuff was happening. So I sent it to the render queue and then it worked correctly. Okay, so you want to make sure your stuff is uh, going and all that. Um, so I'm going to show just the startup process for this product. Um, I mentioned before getting your images, getting some designs, what you want laid out as far as what products. Um, so finding images like this are always helpful. When I look at this image, I'm looking at basically a glass bottle with a label that would wrap around it. Okay, um, Just like my Mountain Dew here, this is a plastic bottle with a label that would wrap around it. We will have labels on our stuff, <clears throat> so we want to encompass that. The more complex you get, glass, um, see-through things, uh, chrome, that kind of stuff, the more um, uh, expensive it is to render it out, the longer it takes, um, and the more setup we have to do. Um, if you keep it simple, like this kind of shape, your life is a lot easier, okay? So I would say do the life is a lot easier ones, then if you have time, then go crazy with some of the other ones. It may not seem like a huge deal, but even like this top here, to get it to look nice takes a few minutes, okay? Um, same thing with this one, not as much, but same thing-ish with that one. Uh, where was the other one I saw? Don't do a camera if you're not there yet. All right. Um, so uh, that's where we're going to start. Now, where we will end up is going to be in KeyShot, which is this program. Um, the way that this software works, and again, I want to show it just so you're aware uh, of where this is going to head. I'm going to go and find my file, P drive there, 2510, and single product body wash and import. All right, so there's my product. That's what I've rendered out or created inside of Cinema. It's a very simple product. The interface for KeyShot is meant just to do rendering. So basically, I need textures, I need lights. Um, you can do some animation in it, uh, but this is uh, a really cool way to do this. Um, we don't have to create materials from scratch. They're all right there. Um, you can't see that. Nobody tells me anything. You guys just, every class. One day I'll just fix it, and it'll be the last day of the semester probably. All right, it's not going to screen size, so just deal with the uh, fact that you can't see the very left of my screen. It's nothing important. It just has materials. All right, so I can search for stuff here. Um, so plastic, and you'll see all these different plastics that I could drag onto this. So we don't need to worry too much about the specific numbers. We'll tweak stuff. We don't need to worry about specific numbers, though, to get it there. So there's a plastic, boom, that looks, you know, plastic. Then I can go over here to edit this material, and then I can choose the color of that. Uh, I can choose the roughness, refractive index, the specular color. Um, see a little bit of red, kind of? Yeah, you can see a little bit of red on there. Um, wouldn't have that, but you could. Okay, and then you could also do labels. So that's how it's, it's easy to do labels with this because I can simply go here, add a label texture, and then I believe I threw one into my downloads, body wash label, and there it is. And as I resize this, oops, try that, adding that again. My sizing of the screen kind of freaked out. Uh, body wash, there it is. Uh, I can adjust that. I can adjust the sizing of it, adjust its position. There we go. And then I will be doing that. Just translate Scoot that there. Uh, All right, so I'm done with that. I'll hit that. All right. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for our demonstration. 
Okay. Uh, now what's cool about this too is that I can go into my environment and I can drop in different environments. So here's different lighting setups. So I don't have to add lights. I can just simply drag these and hey, there's that body wash that's on the street everyone's talking about. <laughs> Uh, it has other stuff too. <clears throat> There's the background. I can choose whether I see the background, whether I see a solid color, uh, whether it's a gradient. Uh, I can adjust all these properties too. So if I don't like a specific one, it's very easy to do um, inside here to change the exact coloration of stuff that I want. Okay, so it's more of the art direction side is just getting in there and getting exactly what we want out of this. Okay. Uh, I did mention before that Keyshot is a pay software. There isn't a free trial for students, but um, you do get this with your Adobe subscription, which is Dimensions. Um, years and years and years ago, uh, MCA, because that's what it was called at the time, used to teach 3D using Dimensions, and it was a horrible program. If you wanted to rotate something 360 degrees, you would rotate it 90 degrees and render it out, rotate it 90 degrees, render it out, rotate it 90 degrees, render it out, rotate it 90 degrees, and render it out. It couldn't do a full 360 because it's like you're in the same spot. Um, so here's that same body lotion. You get this. You could use this too, yep. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, Yes, because they realize we're not going to compete with the animation. We're going to do basically uh, rendering is what it is. So it's just like KeyShop, but it's an Adobe product. Um, so it's really nice. It does have some limitations and differences, uh, but for what we're doing, it's really good. It's actually a, a, a designer's tool. So if I was to design a label and I wanted to see what that label would look like on a product to show the client, there, this is what they would use. So there's my same thing. Um, this little cloth that's there comes with the software, so you can just drop in different things that you want to show your stuff off. Same thing with the background. I found a picture in there in their library and just dropped it in. Um, okay, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, I'll open this this other one that I did. Sorry about that. And this is all products that were inside their stuff. I just dropped um, some textures on it and kind of reorganize some of the stuff. But there you go. There's MACA's logo, MACA on a piece of wood, on a takeout container, and then just a bag of chips, because why not? <laughs> okay, now, go ahead. I put the label on the chips, yes. Uh, and this is actually just a picture. I found a picture of chips in my house, or chips in my house, I took a picture of it, dropped it on there, and there it is. Um, all of our stuff we're gonna create from scratch, uh, but that's the idea. Um, and like I said, if I created a logo, I'm showing this off to a client. I want to show them, here's what it would look like in all of these things. I'm making a new Starbucks cup logo design, whatever it is. There's a coffee cup. I can just drag it down here. Wait a minute. And where did you go? There it is. And then there's the stuff. And then each one of these has their own properties that I could tweak. I could give a texture to this. I can give a texture to that. Um, here's a food can. Okay. This stuff was on a table because that's what I wanted for this one. Okay. So this does come with yours, and I do recommend if you're a designer, don't just show off a logo or a design flat, show it off like this, right? You can do animations in here too. Um, it does have a rendering engine right there. Then I can hit the render button, it'll take some time, I won't. Um, and you can see all these products that are already here. Now that you're in 3D, you're gonna see how we would create these types of things, okay? So that's where this is going. Um, I wanted to show it, obviously, just so you can help connect the dots as to why we're doing the stuff we're doing. Um, cool. So here are some of the products that I created. <coughs> um, you'll see that they're not terribly complex, and for that exact reason. I want this to look good. It's a lot easier to make something simple like this bottle here and make it look good versus me struggling with something that my skills are not there yet uh, to get there. Now, there's no point, there's no harm in trying to challenge yourself, but make sure you can do the basic stuff before you start doing the more advanced stuff, okay? Build up to those. Um, even you'll find like something like this or something like that was a bit more complex than just creating that. Uh, even this one, uh, this one is a square-ish bottle with a round top that's not just like a couple clicks and it works. There's a lot of tweaking involved in there, okay? 
Um, this assignment is really going to start taking us into that next realm of creating stuff that looks more realistic. Up to this point, it's all been um, a lot easier, a lot more forgiving. This is not forgiving. If I have one point that's off, it won't look good. Okay, We want this to look as realistic as possible. Um, so I'm going to go to a new scene, and I'm going to start creating my stuff. Now, you do have to do a little bit of imagining when you do this. Um, we're going to start with, again, just a simple one. So let's say we start with this bottle right here on the right. Um, you have to imagine that that bottle is cut into quarters, okay? So if you ever seen those party decorations, it's like the bell where you would buy it and then it unfolds, it's like the paper one, right? So imagine that you have just that, just like what does it look like when it's cut right in half and right in half again? Um, just to give you a for instance, this will be a perfect opportunity for me to do this on purpose. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Control 50, yes, there we go. Um, this is the first time I've ever actually opened up this thing to actually use it on purpose. So there is the line that we would draw, and oh, I believe it's in that spot. There we go. So I'm going to draw straight down here, and then I'm going to draw this type of thing, okay? So this is essentially what we would get. There we go. Uh, if we cut this into a quarter, that's the piece that we would see. Now, we don't care about this line, okay? We are not going to draw that line. That line will automatically show up there. Uh, we also don't care right now about the cap because we're going to draw this in pieces as it would actually be created that will save us time later. Typically, something like this, that might be a hard plastic bottle with a hard plastic cap. They might be sa the same color but different textures or whatever. So we want to keep them all separate. Uh, also, if we have something that is... Um, uh, can be repurposed, this cap and this cap, we can just copy it over, okay? So we're not going to create them on the same one. All right, so what we're going to do is when we draw this stuff inside of Cinema, we don't do it in the perspective view. Um, maybe three of you will do it in the perspective view and it won't work, and then you'll learn your lesson. So we need to middle click, and I need to go into either the front or the right view. It doesn't matter which, just be consistent with which one you pick. Now, uh, in Illustrator, typically what we would do to draw a shape is we would use the pen tool and we would draw out what that shape looks like. That's what we're going to do inside here. Um, under Object Spline, there's a whole bunch of different things here. <coughs> uh, we're going to use the pen tool right there. Uh, the pen tool is also right here. Okay, so all of these you can get to this same spot right there. Okay, and it works just like the pen tool inside of Illustrator. Um, I always recommend just kind of screwing around with it for a second before you actually get into creating something. Uh, then I'm going to hit the uh, E key, and then I'm going to delete that. Okay, uh, back to the pen tool. Now, what we want to do is we don't want to try to draw this exactly like we would see it uh, inside that shape like this. Down, like that, okay? Uh, this is going to be a lot harder to do than what we're going to do. Uh, what we want to do is basically just add in those points where it's changing shape. So I'm going to go into my options and just choose linear. And what this does is it gets rid of the handlebars. All I'm going to do is just click where this thing is changing directions. Afterwards, I'll come back and add bevels to help round off all these corners. That's typically the easiest way to do this kind of thing. Uh, we do need to have some accuracy here, like I mentioned. So um, this green line that happens right there, I probably erased it yesterday. That's that middle line happening right in the middle. Okay, That's why we're not drawing it, because that's the line that we're going to draw our stuff around. So um, I need to make sure that my start point is starting right there. Um, if I hit an area where um, like a bottle would be open in the middle here, uh, or on the side, it'll be open in that area. I don't need to go to the end. If I'm doing something like a cap, then I would. And you'll see that as I do it. So now we're going to get introducing to snapping. Um, the snap tool is right here. That you can't see. Let's see what it's called. Let's try this again. Okay, this window is letting me resize. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so this is the snap tool. The hotkey is Shift S. You will want to know that because you will constantly be switching back and forth between snapping and not snapping. 
Um, the snapping tool inside of uh, Cinema does not work the same as the snapping tool in other softwares. We have to tell it exactly what we want to snap to. So I'm going to hold on here, and this is all the stuff that we can snap to inside of here. Um, I need to turn on these three items, okay, work plane, grid point, and grid line. So I turn the first one on, go back to the snap, turn the second one on, go back to the snap, turn the third one on. So now as I draw, it will snap to any of those grid intersection lines. Um, another thing about cinema is as I'm far out here, you'll see that there's not really any snapping happening right here in the middle. But if I zoom in, now I get grid points and now it'll snap to those. As I zoom into that, I get more grid points. So the closer you zoom in, the more grid lines you'll get, which is really nice because you can draw at any level, okay? So my first point that I'm going to create is going to be right here. I put my first point right at that green-blue intersection. And then I kind of arbitrarily go out to however far I think I need to go. Let's say this far. Okay. Then I'm going to come up and go as far up as I think I need to. Let's say this bottle is that big. There we go. Um, now I'm drawing this bottle here. So I drew this point. I'll draw it on this side. This point, I drew this corner. Uh, I'm going to draw basically this point right here. So I'm imagining a straight line coming up. I'm going to draw that point and then I'm going to go up. Okay, so I'm going to go, let's say here. And there's a little bit of a rim there. So I think I may need to come over a little bit. Let me zoom in some more. Need more detail. Yeah, see, I was off, so it's not going to be snapped. So I zoom in there. So we're going here. So there is that bottle, okay? I can look at the dimensions. I can look at how this is uh, shaping out. I can adjust as needed. Once my shape is drawn, I'm free to go in there and start moving stuff around. The initial part of this is just getting things lined up correctly first, and then I can just start grabbing stuff and let's say moving this over, grabbing this and moving it up. And I'm just using my marquee to grab the points and move the points. Okay, so that seems better. I can always adjust it afterwards. Okay, um, go back to my model mode. I can now switch back to perspective. Okay, so there is the rough shape of my object. You'll see there's no rounding. It's just corner, corner, corner. You do not have to get them to be exact like that shape. You just have to make it look like it could be that shape. Okay, uh, bottles typically have those roundings here. You'll see each one of these have these roundings. So it should have that similar shape. If it's like this wobbly pattern, that wouldn't be something in the real world, okay? Uh, so that looks pretty good. Now I need to take this curve and actually make the curve into a real shape. Under this menu here, uh, we have subdivision surface. That's what we've um, shown, maybe a couple, the mini room one I showed that. Um, we're gonna use the lathe. And what the lathe does is it takes that curve and it spins it around and creates a surface. Um, it's green, so where does that mean it's gonna go? Above it, right? So Alt, click that, and there's my subdivision surface. Uh, nothing shows up, something broke, hold on. <laughs> oh wait, that's not subdivision, sorry. Uh, I have to Alt, click and hold, there we go, lathe, boom. And there's our shape, okay? Um, these two things are connected. If I needed to adjust any of these, I can grab back on the spline, tweak that shape, and it'll tweak my bottle. So if I don't like the angle of this, I go back to the spline, go back to the points. Um, I would recommend to you switch back to your front view and do it here. You can't see the points, but they're right there. And then I could tweak. That's going to come down. Uh, this one, maybe that would come down some there. And also move that over, that looks good. Maybe this is a little bit too big, so we'll just push that in a little bit. And maybe I wanna push this down a little bit. There we go. All right, so that feels a little bit better than what I had a second ago. A cap will happen on top of it, so I don't need to worry about what happens up here. If this were glass, um, I would need to have an actual thickness here. It looks like there's thickness, but there's not. The underside of this is completely hollow. This is like paper thin, okay? Um, cool. 
So if I'm happy with the way this turned out, then I would just hit C on this. I recommend, again, if you're not sure of something, hold control, make a copy of it. That way you can always go back to it, okay? Even for this bottle here, if I decided, hey, this bottle right here looks an awful lot like that bottle with maybe just some different proportions as far as height and width and all that, I can just take the original spline, change the shape, and then use that for another bottle, okay? Um, start layering my stuff so it stays organized. I'll grab these two dudes, drop it on a new layer, and call this construction or something. Turn it off. All right, so now this one is the good one. I'm going to hit C on it so I can actually manipulate what the shape looks like. Um, cool. So there's the original, sh the new shape. This is locked in. I can edit the points if I need to. This is where we don't want to just start grabbing stuff and moving it because that'll distort it. Um, I'm only going to put in bevels. So anywhere I have a hard edge shouldn't have a hard edge. Most surfaces in the real world have no hard edges. Um, these three, this, 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 are going to have a very similar radius to them, okay? Big and broad, right? On my uh, Mountain Dew container, there's a huge radius right here. There's a huge radius right there. But on this little lip, there's a tiny radius. So I'm separating that into the different areas of how uh, wide or rounded it's going to be. Uh, from six years ago, do you remember the uh, hotkey to show my modeling tools? You don't. It's M. <laughs> okay. Or right clicking, we can get that. Right? So oops. Uh, remember M, and then any of those hotkeys here will bring stuff up. So I want bevel, so I'm going to hit M to bring the modeling tool up, and then hit S to bring up the bevel. And then, and you guys will do this a bunch of times, I'm sure, um, don't, here's my move tool, don't touch the move tool. When you're in the bevel tool, you just click and drag right on that edge and drag. It might go crazy. Any guesses why it's going so crazy? It says it right next to my stuff. Right, the snap's on. So it's snapping to those grid lines all around. This is why um, I want to hit undo, hit shift S, so I don't have to move my mouse all the way over there. And now, much better, okay? Uh, we don't want to go crazy with divisions, but we do want this to look good. So what that means is down here, that doesn't look good. I need to add a couple subdivisions, okay? I can also adjust my offset here. That's good. That's good, that's good. Be aware that they can overlap. They shouldn't overlap, but they can. If I take this number to a crazy distance, that's a bad thing, okay? So you wanna make sure that these things, oh, I undid it. <laughs> okay, nice and smooth, there we go. Uh, you wanna make sure it looks nice and smooth right there, perfect. Now I'm gonna go to my move tool, and then I'm gonna grab all the other pieces. So this one, that one, this one, that one, this one, and that one. And S, click and drag. Just go crazy right there. Back to modeling mo mode, and there we go. So this is like more of a jug, apparently, uh, than maybe I wanted. Um, I can still tweak this. If I grab the shape here, I go to my uh, points switch to my marquee tool, there we go. So now it's just a taller bottle, it works. Uh, go back to this, there we go. Okay, so that, looking at it now, it's probably gonna be like a uh, industrial size shampoo bottle that I basically will use that for the rest of my life, right? Something you buy at Costco before the end of days. Um, if you look at it, you'll see some lines. It's hard to see on the projector, but there are some lines kind of going around. This is the opposite of what we wanted on the environment, right? The environment, we wanted those facets. Here, we're getting them, but we don't want them. So I'm gonna go to my uh, Fong tag and turn off this angle limit, and that will smooth out all that stuff, okay? Uh, there's also a couple rough spots here. Um, and I say rough, it's just, let me middle click so we can see it better. If you look at the curvature of this, 
it kind of goes at an angle. There's a rounding, a flat area, and a rounding again. That might be a little bit too much um, rounding for my liking, okay? Or a little too much like change of direction. Uh, I'm gonna go into my edge tool here. And even though I added edges, I can still grab these, right click and say dissolve to get rid of them. And what that does is it just helps the surface flow nicely from one spot to the next. Now it's not there yet, but it will be in a second. Um, I'm not going to touch this one. That's the one that goes straight. Don't touch that guy. But this one here, I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay. So now this seems like it flows nice. Now I can grab this, hold Alt, add that subdivision, and look at how smooth that area is. That definitely looks 10 times better than it did a second ago. Cool, so that bottle is done. Bottle. Uh, now I need a cap for it um, because it needs a cap. Same process, I go into my uh, front view, I draw what the cap should look like, lathe it, tweak it, and then it's done. Um, so what tool did I use to draw it? Pen tool, right there. Um, do I have to turn anything on before I start drawing? Snap, yes, oh snap. And then don't get locked into, I need to get it exactly in the right spot, you'll tweak it after, right? So if I were to draw this here, that's a really short cap that would look weird. Uh, if I drew it obviously way up, that might look too big. So I'm just gonna kinda go in the middle here. Go here. There, there, and there. Okay, now I went up the side just so I would have enough area to kind of bevel that. We will never see that, but I want it to be there so that um, if I decide to ever take the cap off, I guess I have it there. Um, it doesn't need this one specifically. We're never gonna see it. It's just easier to do it now than try to add it in later. That's all. Uh, cool. So I'll jump back to this view. That looks like an actually a good size cap. If it wasn't, again, I would switch to my points, um, grab the points here, move them up, move them down, grab these ones, move them over, move them this way, whatever I need to. You can do this in your perspective view, but just make sure you don't grab it and pull it in the wrong direction. That's the wrong direction, okay? That has to stay flat, otherwise when you lathe, it'll actually twist and it'll look weird. Um, all right, so I have my curve. What's the next step? Add the lathe, there we go. Inspect it, see how it looks. That looks like, it seems like it matches, right? Good, all right. Um, so I can make a copy of this if I need to, if I want to, um, I will, so I have it. And I'll copy that um, layer onto that so it hides it. And then I'll hit C. Then a little bit of bevel here, here, and close there. And then this is gonna be a small one, so just like that. Oh, maybe a little bit more, let's do it a little bit more. Yeah, that's too much. Uh, one of the things that make products look realistic is ensuring that obviously appropriate bevels are in appropriate spots, but having a variety of them some big ones, some small ones, that's what's gonna make it work good. Um, if everything is the same size, it looks weird, okay? So boom, that one is done. I will label that uh, cap, okay? Then I just take these two items, I Alt G to group them, product Uh, don't move anything away from this center area. Keep everything right there. Just put it on a layer and hide it so you can work on the next one. So new object from selection, product one. Make sure the layer is assigned to all of them and then hide and hide. Okay, so product one is done. Now I start product two. Um, as I mentioned before, I can turn on this one use that as my base and then tweak it and then go from there. Um, just to show you how I would do that process, let me switch back to this uh, view here, there it is. Um, I'll turn off the lathe just so you can see the curves that are there. 
And I'm going to go and grab the points for this one and then just tweak them a bit. So this is going to scoot in this point here and scoot that in a little bit. I'm going to turn my snap off also. I really need to snap on here. All right, so maybe something like that. Maybe I'll even pull this down. There we go. So a little tonic vial is what that one's going to be. Turn these back on. There it is. Now I have the cap for it already, right? Cap's ready to go because I didn't change the cap size. All those pieces should fit. So I can just utilize that. Um, it's weird that the tonic would have, you know, such a big area here. So let me just fix that. That's way too big. Let's get it to here. Pull that down. I think I'll even take this and just squeeze that squeeze that. There you go. That feels better. All right. Uh, so same process. I can take these uh, two items that are all ready to go pretty much, um, duplicate them, and then just put them on their own layer for now, and then I'll hide them after. So new layer, product, hide my construction layer, and then just assign these to that new layer. And then I'll just adjust their position. Um, this cap here needs to come down. I'm going to hit L, move the pivot up. Hit L again, move the cap down. And maybe this one, I actually want this to be like more on top of it. I, maybe I don't want that rim. Let's see. Uh, and then this one, I'm going to hit C, go to my edge, and then just bevel it. This one's a tonic, so smaller bottle, probably not as big of a bevel. Maybe something like that. Looks good. And then I'll do the same thing to the cap. Grab the edges here, here. I could have just duplicated the other cap as well. That would have worked. Another bevel. Beautiful. Um, cap, bottle, product. Jeez. Every time it's that second letter with cap Y. There we go. Okay. If I'm doing a brand new product, I just jump back to my front view, go back to my curve, make sure I'm on linear, make sure I start it right here. Make sure my snap is on, and then click, and then whatever I want to do here. If I have some kind of weird design, I can put a weird design. There's nothing wrong with uh, having that. Okay, you just want to make sure it looks believable, not fake. Uh, okay, and this one I think I'm just going to go straight up right there. Switch to my move tool, and then jump back to here, back to lathe. All right, probably too short for what I need. So let's go back to the spline. Now notice that I haven't really um, looked at the other sizes. My other one might be super tiny compared to this one. This one might be huge. Afterwards, I'll scale everything and fit them all correctly. Right now, I'm more concerned about proportions than I am about actual physical sizes, okay? Um, so let's go scoot that up, grab this. Girls would buy that, right? I think they would. All right, so I'm going to hit C. I'm going to go to my tool, grab that, grab that. Actually, maybe I'll do this one first, make a nice big bevel here. Turn my snap off first, and then I'll do that. There we go. Okay. Let's see what this looks like. I may tweak what I do there. It looks like dish soap, that's why. <laughs> you go with dish soap, right? Dish soap for your hair. As a side note, did anyone see when they uh, pay less? Did I pay less? Yeah, pay less opened a store and they were selling discount shoes, but they were selling them at crazy prices and they called it like Palesti or something. And people were like going crazy buying all this stuff. <laughs> Just didn't care. 
share with Payless. I spent six hundred dollars, but it's not here. There we go. All right, so there's that. <clears throat> I can make a cap and have that uh, utilize that too. I really don't like it, so I'm just going to delete it. Don't get attached to your product. If you don't like the way they're turning out, don't try to tweak it and tweak it and tweak it. Just delete it, make a new one. Um, I've made thousands of products over the years, same project product. Um, here's another one, so we'll grab this, and I'll go snap on uh, here. So you can see it's just some kind of random shape. I didn't have a reference for this, just kind of a random shape. Let's just see what happens. Uh, that looks like something, maybe a perfume, or I don't know what. Uh, it could be believable if I just tweak it enough to get some nice bevels in here. And turn my snap off every time. Okay, no hard edges. None of this should have a hard edge, otherwise it will not work. Uh, is it the bottom one? I did forget the bottom one here. And that double clicking the edge, that's a good check to see if your stuff is set up correctly. If you double click, that doesn't go all the way around, something is wrong. You have extra faces or edges or something, um, and it's just not playing nice. So for this one, let's do like uh, like this little bulb thing. That might be kind of neat to have that set up. So I'll point this. I'm just gonna make that a little bit taller. And there's a cap on it, so it's a little bit fancier cap. I just went right inside the surface um, because I need to have it end somewhere, and I think that that would probably be a good spot to do that. I'll make this a little bit thicker here. Boom. Uh, another lathe. Looks good. And this is a piece of metal. The metal is not going to be like super uh, rounded anywhere. It's going to be pretty. Um, pretty straight with these like small bevels on it like that. Make it a little bit bigger. Whoop. Uh, so that is this thing and I just need to add the hose to this. Um, jump back to this view. Now for this I can employ another um, pen tool and I'm just going to draw out that path. This needs to come up just a bit more. Their illustration is just a bit higher. back to my pen tool, and I'm just going to draw that shape. Um, I'm going to turn my snap off. And I think in this one, I'm actually going to turn on um, Bezier. And that way I can kind of shape what this puffer thing is going to look like. Okay, something like that. If I can tweak my points. Uh, their handle tools kind of suck because you have to like click on them. Oh, let me grab the handle, I'll just tweak it that way. Um, all right, so there's that shape. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the profile for what that shape is going to look like, okay? So imagine that you have a cord. Uh, typically your mouse cables or anything are, are typically round, but if you had a power cable, those are gonna be more like a figure eight um, that basically gets extruded along this shape. 
And that's what I need to do for this. I need to go to create, I'm gonna go to spline and just create a circle. And shrink that down and scoot that in up here. That's what the profile of that curve is gonna look like, okay? So um, I have these two, oops, these two. I'm gonna hold Alt, go to this, and I'm gonna go to sweep. That's what's gonna do that. Now for how it works, it puts a sweep on both. That's fine, I'll just drag this one over to that. Delete the other sweep. And there we go. <laughs> uh, the way that it works with a sweep is you have one is the path and one is the profile, okay? Whichever one's on top um, is the profile. That's what I want to make sure the circle is. And then there we have this path following along there. Now I can go to my circle and give it a little bit of rotation. Come on. Uh, let's go back to the sweep. Parallel movement, no. Parallel scale, parallel direction, banking. Uh, I had to go to the circle and change the plane here to X, Y, and then it was happy. Now I can scale it down like so. A little bigger. All right, so that looks like a hose. I can again adjust the spline, go back and tweak the points, move them around uh, as needed. Uh, I need to then create the little bulbous thing here um, I'm just going to create a um, sphere and just tweak the shape of that. So I'll make it bigger. Um, I need less divisions. Anytime you're tweaking a object, uh, if I turn on the lines here, that's way too many lines. I want to get this down to like, uh, that's too little. Maybe eight is a good amount. Uh, maybe nine or ten actually. Nine is good, there we go. I want to have this big section in the middle. That's what I was after. Uh, I'm going to hit C. So I can edit the points, I'll rotate it, uh, scoot it up so it's on the floor, okay? It's obviously like way too big, right? That's way too big, but that's fine. There we go. And now I'm just going to grab the points here, points there, go back to my spline and grab that point. And I just need to take the sphere and give it a smooth. Pretty close. I'm going to hit undo. I think I want to add just a um, edge loop, so KL. Right there in the middle and scale this up. There we go. So now when I add that, it gives it a little bit more of a bulbous shape. All right. I just need to fix this and then I'll be done with this one. Uh, spline, points. Grab this, rotate it, scoot it down some. All right, that'll work. All right, I need to just do one more thing on the sweep. <coughs> um, I'm gonna play with my settings. Before I hit C on this, there's so many divisions here. Um, I'm gonna take this down. I have to go to the spline, sorry. I'm gonna tweak this, there we go. Do a lower number, like that, there we go. Nice and smooth, that's what I get this. Oh, okay, now that looks ugly again. Back to the points. Let me turn this off for a second and just jump to the sphere. I'm not happy with that, so I'm going to delete it and erase it. I'm going to add another point right out of the bat, so it just goes straight right here. There we go. And then come further down. That feels better. Add on to this. Come back. All right. So that's going to feel better. I just drop this into here now, and nothing happened. 
to a happy place. Oh, I can see that. Yep. Uh, oh, Teresa Babke Sanders. Okay. Where's it at? There it is. So just click it right. All right. We do have a little twist in here now. It's always a fun thing. We go back and grab our point, which is down here. Maybe rotate it. Nope, that didn't do it. Let's move it. There it is. So it just wasn't happy in that specific spot. Right, so the same thing here, just kind of rotate. Maybe scale this one in and then adjust its position. Much better. Okay. Um, all right. So then I need to do one more thing before I do that. That feels good. I want to have a nice division here because there's a little, actually a little like adapter that goes right there. And there's a nice division there. Okay. That's good. I'm going to go to my circle. I'm going to take the um, uh, intermediate points to natural. Very similar to what we did with the text. It's just dividing how it's going to be um, divided all the way around that circle. And I can pull that down to two, let's say. All right, so now I'm going to hit C on this. Then I'm going to grab the faces. I'm going to try to grab the faces. There we go. Make sure I grabbed it all the way around, and then I'm just going to do an extrude. D, there we go. Just to give that a little bit of an adapter there. And then do the same thing up here. And I don't need a hole on this side. You would have a hole there, but you don't need a hole because you're not going to see it. Uh, and we can always add a texture to that if we need it. Uh, more bevels. Yeah. Um, if you've heard about this thing called booleans, some of these people that know 3D from the past come in here and they know booleans. Don't use it. Um, it's a horrible tool that will just cause you issues later. Uh, there's caps on this. I'm going to delete the caps. I don't need those. I'm going to add a subdivision surface on it. Turn off my divisions. Let's see. Make sure it still looks good. Beautiful. And I'll go through and just name stuff and then put them on layers. Bulb. Pose. Throw this onto a layer. Where is the name stuff? There we go. And I haven't saved a single thing. Look at that. <laughs> uh, sorry, going in for all my work. All right, that's good. All right, so that's going to be the process for all of these things. Keep them simple. Um, I will show. Uh, next class, how we are able to take um, a square shape and transition to a circular shape. So more uh, complex stuff will come, but just get the, the groundwork done. Once you understand this, then the next part's easier, then the next part's easier. Okay? Questions yet? So where I have... Let's say my cap here. Um, one of the things that makes a cap look like a cap is, where's my pivot? It's way down there. Scoot that over. There we go. Um, is having ridges on it. So if I go to my divisions there, I can actually grab all of these. Make sure my attributes are selected. I'm going to hit tolerant selection so I can see the cap. Um, I'm going to extrude inner, turn off preserve groups, there we go, and then extrude again, pull that out, okay, 
and then on this, I would add a smooth after I did some more work to it. Uh, but I don't want this resolution trickling into the rest of the bottle, right? Um, especially if I screw up the bottle strap, now it's just the cap that gets strapped. And then just for completion's sake, let's just add some extra divisions here so that we have this. Um, there we go, a line right here, a line right in there. That should help us. We probably need to add a little bit more. No, that actually works. Lost my division. Okay, so that resolution doesn't transfer into the rest of it. That's all. Cool. Anything else? All right. 